The monster that Mrs. Baxter saw was 12 feet tall, as tall as these bushes behind me. Her story is similar to dozens of others told every year in this area about people who got fleeting glimpses of the Bigfoot. Meanwhile, let me pass on the good word about the new Wonky Times. Wonky Times. Wonky Times. Hello, welcome to the show. Hey, we've got a very special Throwback Thursday episode for you today. Matt, today is not Thursday. Oh, crap, you're right. <laughs> I could have sworn it was Thursday. It looks like you're a little late. For this week, that is. Well, so now what? I had a whole episode planned for Throwback Thursday. I think everything is okay. Some listeners may tune in on Thursday of next week, or even the week after that, and oh. it'll make perfect sense then. Okay, Brian, you, you make sense, Brian. You always make sense. Okay, that. all right, here we go. So everyone listening right now, just stop listening. Come back next Thursday, and it'll all make sense, I promise. I have a feeling people are still listening. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right, Brian. I mean, we can just go with it, you know? So, hey everyone, welcome to the Wonky Times Podcast on Throwback Thursday, on uh, whatever day it is today. It's me, Matt Sterner, as in more stern than others. I don't find you very stern. And that is my co-host, Robo Brian. You can call him Brian. He's a droid of some sort. He's got nuts and bolts, grease and oil. Matt, I'd like to keep some things private. Oh, sorry. So, you know, I want to talk about Bigfoot today. Are you talking about the hairy forest creatures? Yep, that's the beast I'm talking about here. I've seen you without your shirt on, walking around the house. (laughs) You sort of resemble the hairy characters known as Sasquatch. (laughs) What? Come on. Yes, I'm talking about your chest lettuce. Your chest moss. (laughs) Oh, that's not even true. And hey, you know, I want to keep some things private too, man. And, you know, there are hairier chests out there in the world, I'm sure. So yeah, anyways, um, we'll get to the Bigfoot stuff in just a moment, but we received a a wonky voicemail earlier this week, and we want to share that with you first, you know, to you, you, the person who's still listening, even after we asked you to stop. Perhaps you weren't stern enough. Maybe that's why they're still listening. That's not surprising. Okay, but, you know, I want to share this voicemail. Yes, you said that already. Yeah, (laughs) it's about an alien abduction in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I'm not too sure if I'm buying it, you know. It's, I mean, it's about aliens, disco, and dancing. (laughs) So, I almost don't want to play it, but, you know, I've got a wild hair at my butt today. So let's do it. You've got more than just one hair. You've got an entire garden. (laughs) You're really uh, observant today, Brian. Let's hear it. Okay, here it is. Hey, no. Hey, Rob O'Brien. I uh, thought I had this kind of crazy thing happening, and I just thought I had to call you guys, take advantage of the opportunity, you know, let the wonky times people know what's going on. So here it is. I was uh, driving down this deserted road. It was a stormy night, you know, one of those perfect scenes from a horror movie. Singing my 80s ballads and just oblivious to the extraterrestrial encounter that was waiting for me. All of a sudden, this bright beam of light lifted my dang car off of the ground with some NASA-worthy force. I guess my terrified screams were drowned out by the alien DJ possessing my stereo. Screaming was blasting otherworldly beats, if you can imagine. I faced a group of gray, bug-eyed aliens clad in sequin jumpsuits and neon antenna. So weird, right? Apparently, I've been abducted by an intergalactic 70s disco party. Confused, I stammered, why me? Am I singing? I can tone it down. I mean, you know how the, the disco guys go against the 80s ballad guys, so I'm not trying to offend anybody. To my surprise, though, the aliens laughed and the leader said, we're not here to judge your singing. We wanted to throw the wildest cosmic party ever. In a snap, before I knew it, the spaceship transformed into a pulsating nightclub, and I just grooved to unearthly music, impressing the extraterrestrial crowd with my dance moves. As the party ended, the aliens bid farewell, promising to keep my adventure a secret in their disco-loving civilization's archives. Back on Earth, though, I chuckled at the absurdity. I became the galaxy's grooviest abductee. I shared the unbelievable tale with my friends. So be cautious on dark country roads, y'all. You might encounter funky extraterrestrial visitors and become the star of an interstellar dance party where laughter transcends galaxies. Beware. (laughs) 
That was really crazy, Brian, wasn't it? I mean, that was my second time listening to it, and yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm falling for it, you know. Are you not a fan of disco? Well, no, I, I didn't say that. Are you upset you weren't invited to this cosmic party? No, that's not what I'm saying. Perhaps you wish you were the galaxy's grooviest abductee. <laughs> okay, yeah, you've hit the nail right on the head there, Brian. Oh, shoot, you know, we've got a quick commercial break sponsored by Wonky Pet Portraits. Here's the artsy-fartsy commercial. Wonky Times will be right back after this short commercial break. When Polly came into my life, I had no idea how much I needed the level of companionship that a dog provides. She lights up my life. And now, thanks to Matt Sterner and Wonky Pet Portraits, I have this incredible painting of her that celebrates the fun, cool, confident gal that she is. Everyone should have a chance to see their pet through Matt's eyes. So what are you waiting for? Head over to wonkypetportraits.com to turn your pet companion into a real work of art. And, um, you know, I highly recommend those wonky pet portraits to anyone who's listening. You know, they're so artsy, so cool. Super cool. Yeah, super cool. 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 They're super cool. Hey, you're super cool, Brian. Cool. You're cool. I know. Psh. Cool. Cool. So, why is today's show a Throwback Thursday episode? I haven't forgotten what you mentioned about your plans just a few minutes ago. Oh, yeah, well, I wanted it to be a throwback so we could chat about a number of Bigfoot sightings back in 1971. You know, that's more than 50 years ago. Well, 51 years to be exact. It's 52 years ago. Dang it. Math stuff. Actually, it's 52 years ago if you're listening to this episode in 2023, so... That's a very long time ago. I was merely a megabyte of a thought. It's also the year Richard Nixon installed a secret taping system in the White House. It was the year A Clockwork Orange was released in movie theaters. Oh wow, that, that was quite the movie, wasn't it? Yes, and it was a big year for music. Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin was released as well as John Lennon's Imagine. Imagine that. Okay, so this video is from a long, long time ago. <laughs> Brian, you were probably still hanging out on a floppy disk somewhere when this came out. Cool. But anyway, the TV station KGW ventured out to Skamania, Washington, to interview people who claim to have seen the legendary creature of the Northwest. Ooh. It's actually pretty interesting. The uh, KGW reporter's name is John Tuttle, and he had quite the field day out there. I am very eager to hear it. It looks like the first witness Tuttle spoke to about it came face to face with the creature. Yep, here's a clip from the interview from 1971. But before I stopped the car, I heard this whomping sound, and that's why I thought I had a flat. But I couldn't understand because we just put new tires on, and I... I could have been making a noise, or beating on his chest, or the pole. It was only about, um, probably one foot from the pole. You hear, in this area, you hear noises at night, I understand. Oh, yeah. There Lots aren't cougar noises. noises. There aren't bear noises. No. Right. There's no noise to describe it, really, because I've never, I've just never heard anything like it. Cougars don't make that noise. Bears don't. Elk or moose or whatever else around. Something else is out there. There's something else out there, okay. And it's not just at night, it's in the daytime, too, because they've been hearing them day, night, evening, mornings, you even high noon. Do you see things? Is it just the noise? Noises mostly, other than when I've seen this creature down there. Whoa, weird, Brian, right? I mean, these uh, the, the people in this town, they, they talk about these creatures, and they say they're about at least 12 feet tall. That's like two of me on top of each other. Crazy. Yes, very, very, very crazy. Two mats would be crazy. And in this next clip, he speaks to an investigator in town, like a local investigator that, you know, hears a lot about these things. So here's what he has to say about it. Well, the first thing we do naturally is, is uh, sort of check on the people themselves. You have a lot of people who see things all the time. So before we really get serious about one of these reports, we, we assure ourselves that they're responsible people. And then our second step is to find out what they saw. You've uh, got a lot of experience as a reporter. What's your attitude about Sasquatch? Well, I've been investigating these reports and so on, and it seems to me that there's a preponderance of evidence, and I'm, let's say, 95, 98 percent that there is such an animal. I want to see one, but I think there is. 
So, <laughs> so Brian, do you like feet? As opposed to inches or meters? <laughs> no, I mean like a human foot. Human feet. Do they bother you at all? You know, me, like, I, I don't know. I don't like looking at them at all. I don't know why. <laughs> I sometimes look at your feet while you're sleeping at night. <laughs> no way. Come on. I'm bringing this up because there was a local sheriff in town who made a plaster cast of the Bigfoot's footprint. It's super big and super cool, too. Super, super cool. It's like the size of Shaquille O'Neal's foot, maybe. Ooh. But anyways, here's, here's what the sheriff had to say about the finding. Sheriff, you don't take that thing as a fake, right? I think not. Uh, it has a possibility of being uh, a real footprint. What makes you think that might be a genuine footprint? Well, as we uh, discussed in lo the locality that this was found, um, and the area in which we picked this out of was not in a wide open area in which uh, somebody would have free access all the way around, but uh, near this landing site uh, where the trucks drove in, uh, was off to the side of the road. The, uh, if you assume that is a real footprint, that means that somewhere in your county, you must have somebody that can make that kind of footprint. That's uh, very possible. So after that footprint molding, you know, things got pretty serious, Brian. People were showing up to Skamania with guns, and they tried tracking down that Sasquatch. Sasquatch mania. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then the mayor of Skam Skamania... Sorry, I have a hard time saying that. The mayor of Skamania County even passed a no Bigfoot hunting ordinance that made it a crime to shoot a Sasquatch. Here's what, <laughs> so here's what the mayor had to say about it all. Mr. Lundy, how, why did you pass the ordinance? Why, what were the reasons you felt it was necessary to have such an ordinance? Well, uh, after the um, animal was first sighted, uh, we had people coming in from the outside area with high-powered rifles and, and uh, every means to kill the animal. Now, we had a, an expedition up here from uh, Florida, and uh, it's a scientific group of people and, and writers, and they've gone into our back area, and they feel very certain that there is an animal such as this. Okay, so now some folks in town, they think that they know what Bigfoot looks like because they've either seen him or her, or they think they know what it looks like. I bet they look similar to you, but with more chest moss. Your whole body would be covered in moss. <laughs> Why are you calling it moss? What is this? Anyways, here, here's what they had to say. Dark brown, uh, with terrible glowing eyes. His head was sort of reseated, I suppose that's the word. Big teeth. Long hair, I suppose it was three or four inches long. And big wide shoulders, there was no neck. I mean, it just looked like its head set right in its shoulders. Um, I don't know, I didn't stay around to look at it very long. I would, I would think that he is, if he is a, a humanoid type, that, that he's a, a shy creature, a harmless creature, one who wants to live his own life. And, and keep away from people. Possibly an understandable uh, attitude. Kind of a likable animal. I would think so. Now, I have never seen it, and I've hunted in the woods for years, but on the other hand, I've never seen a, a cougar. And I felt, and the Board of County Commissioners felt, that uh, we should protect this animal and also uh, the lives of our, our local citizens, people coming into the area with guns and shooting and everything that moves, we might have a fatality. I was skeptical to start with from the first report we've got, but after having taken this cast, which uh, yeah, seemed to be very authentic to us. Something is out there. We uh, think so. All right, to conclude this, I saved the best for last, Brian. Woo! Super cool. You remember that first lady we, we heard talking about Bigfoot? Well, she was nearly face to face with this big hairy dude a dudette. Here's what she remembers. It's pretty wild. Wild, as in it happened out in the wilderness, and that it's also a crazy story. A double whammy of wild. Right on, Brian. <laughs> Here it is. It's below Bacon Rock. Uh, there's a real wide shoulder just as you go across the bridge, and I just pulled up. I just knew I had a flat, but I couldn't understand. So I got out, and I, I always keep my right door locked. I get out on the left, and I go around with my back to the woods, and I look up and under my car, around the wheel, no 
no flat, so I feel up in there, and while I'm feeling, I suddenly turn around and I'm face to face with him. I mean, it just feels like, it felt like there was something staring at me, is why I looked. And you were face to face with? I don't I, just about 15 feet from me. What was it? I don't know. <laughs> as far as I know, I suppose it would be Bigfoot, but... He was the biggest animal I've ever seen. The, uh, in the course of this thing, we're going to talk to a lot of people who uh, are going to say there's no such thing. That they're, they work at universities in Seattle or in Portland. What's your reaction to those people who simply stand up and say, there's no pictures of it, it's not there? I don't really know. I, After seeing it, I just can't help but believe there is, and I think they're crazy. They don't have such a broad enough mind about it. Um, There's simply no doubt in your mind there is something there, something. There is something, definitely. But uh, put a name on it, I couldn't. It's big and it's terrible looking. Well, that's not a very nice thing to say about the so-called Bigfoot. Maybe she caught the creature at a bad time. Yeah, maybe. Perhaps the Bigfoot was having a bad hair day. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it's probably a bad hair day, Brian. You know, and if I was there, I'd be booking it out of there in a heartbeat. I'd be too scared to see that thing face to face. I've seen you run. You are pretty fast. <laughs> you know, I, I can imagine you making one of your Bigfoot calls, Brian. Your, your Sasquatch growl. <coughs> hey, if you haven't listened to that podcast episode, it's pretty funny. <coughs> Yeah, that, that, that's from the episode 11. So yeah, go back to episode 11. Go back. Listen now. I dare you. Look at me being all stern. You're finally living up to your name, yeah. Matt Sterner. <laughs> yeah, woo! All right, let, let's end this episode while I'm feeling good about myself. Yeah, so whoever's listening, I want to remind you that we have a Wonky Times hotline. That phone number is 520-477-1942. Nineteen forty-two. We're not going to answer it, but leave us a voicemail, and we'll, we'll likely play it on the next episode. Plus, if you have seen anything strange, we would love to hear about it. Email us at getwonky at wonkytimes.com for a chance to be featured in an upcoming episode of the Wonky Times podcast. Well, that's it. Thanks for getting wonky with us, everybody. It's time for Matt and Robo Brian to get the heck out of here. Oh!